Hey everyone, I'm Isabel, and today I'm going to share with you three different ways to use under cabinet lighting to brighten up your home. Before I begin, I want to say a special thank you to Parmida for sponsoring this video. When I moved to LA, one of the first rooms that got the engineer your space treatment was my kitchen. A custom removable backsplash, an accent wall, and custom storage all made this kitchen feel a lot more like home. The task lighting I installed, however, wasn't quite as bright as I would have liked above the sink area. So when Parmida offered to send me their ultra thin under cabinet lights to review, I was really excited to give them a try. Each under cabinet light kit comes with six ultra thin light bars, two light switches, which includes a dimmer switch, many, many cable adapters, and all the hardware that you need to not only hang the lights, but also hang the cables, something that most light kits don't usually come with. I had originally used an IKEA light above the sink and a separate lighting kit for under the cabinets, which meant that I had to turn them on and off separately. Not a big deal, but just a bit annoying. So the nice thing about the Parmita lights is that with only one kit, I'll be able to put lighting everywhere, even in the open shelving, which will really brighten up that whole area. The installation is very easy, especially with all the hardware that's provided with the lights. You can use clips or double-sided tape to install the lights. Um, I used tape for the open shelving lights because it was a bit tricky to install the clips uh, all the way underneath there. That wasn't an issue under the cabinet, so there I used the clips. After marking where the clips are going to go, I used the nail to make a small hole, which makes putting in those tiny screws a little bit easier. Then the lights just snap in place really easily. It's really nice to also have all the hardware needed to secure the cables, so it's easy to make everything neat and tidy. These lights are really well made and they're backed with a five-year warranty, so you know they're really built to last. I also really like having the option to use the dimmer or the on-off switch to control the lights. I'll put a link to these lights in the video description below in case you want to find out more information. I could have stopped here, but then I got the idea to add a blue background to the open shelves to match the accent wall. I didn't want to paint the cabinet, so instead I painted cardboard that I had left over from my bedroom project and used removable double-sided tape to secure it to the back of the cabinet. I love how the blue makes the white dishes and glassware pop, and I think I actually prefer it to just all white. But let me know which one you prefer in the comments below. Now the next space I could use some brightening up is my tiny entryway. I installed a mirror to make the space look and feel bigger. And because it reflects light from the window, it does help to bring in some light. But the space still felt pretty dark, especially in the evening since there's no light fixture. The dark color scheme also didn't help. So the plan here was to reuse what I had, but get rid of that brown color and somehow incorporate lighting into the coat rack using the Parmita under cabinet lights. I wanted to give the coat rack a whitewashed weathered look. So the first thing I had to do was to take it apart so I could sand off that dark brown color. It was really nice to be able to set up outside to do all this sanding because it's certainly not something that I would want to do inside my apartment. I went very heavy on the sanding around the edges to give it that uneven, worn down effect. And then I distressed the wood even more with this contraption that I made with screws and then just using some different tools that I had to make marks. Here the idea is to make different types of marks in a random pattern to give that over time worn out look. Here you can get a better look at the distressing that I was talking about. I think I went a bit too heavy on the gouges, but it definitely does look beat up and old. For the whitewash treatment, I just used some inexpensive white latex paint that I thinned out with a bit of water. The key here is to work really quickly to be able to wipe off the coat of paint with a rag before it dries, and that way you can still see the wood grain come through. As I was finishing putting the coat rack back together, I started thinking about the different ways the under cabinet lights could be integrated into this coat rack. The most logical place seemed to be on the back and the top boards. 
The only thing that I did have to do to make this work though is to carve out the wood to make room for the wires so that everything would sit flush with the board. Doing this was fairly simple using a handsaw to make some grooves and then using a chisel and a hammer to remove all the wood. It doesn't look pretty but luckily this won't be seen once the coat rack is installed. I made sure that the wires fit perfectly inside the cavity and then I moved on to installing the lights with the clips. I ended up putting a light above and below the top board to make it even brighter. And I also installed light diffusers along the sides. I actually had to MacGyver those using plastic corner guards that I covered with parchment paper. They did a nice job of hiding the wires while at the same time leaving enough space on the sides for air to circulate, which is important since these lights are not meant to be totally enclosed. I can control the lights with the wall switch or using the on-off switch or the dimmer. It's really nice to have all these options to get the lighting just right, especially in the evening. You might have noticed that the mirror also got a new look. I'll be sharing that project in another video coming really soon. The last project that I did was in my home office. If you watched my last video, you know that I recently gave it a pretty big makeover. It included a faux wainscoting wall treatment and my favorite addition, a hidden whiteboard. I also changed the layout so that my desk would face the window. By attaching a two-legged desk to the bookcases, it gave me a decent amount of desk space while at the same time leaving enough room to walk around the desk. I'm loving this new desk setup, but the one downside is that the area inside the bookcase doesn't get as much light as the rest of the desk. Under cabinet lights came to mind as the perfect solution. The first thing I did was to see what configuration of wires I would need to be able to have the lights in both bookcases and have the switches and power supply by the outlet. The many cable extenders that come with the Parmita lights made this customization really easy. After I was sure that the wire situation was going to work, I put on the double-sided tape to install the lights. The hardest part of this entire process is removing the backing. Even when you have nails, that can be a bit tricky. I obviously didn't want the cords between the bookcases to show at the front, so I needed to make a hole through both sides of the bookcases. The finish on these bookcases tends to fray when you drill into it, so putting some tape helps keep that to a minimum. The thickest part of the wire is just over a quarter of an inch thick, so I chose a half inch drill bit to make the hole. I like to start off by making a smaller hole first and then working my way up to the bigger size. I find it's easier and more precise to do it this way. Good thing I remembered to put my post-it note to catch the dust. It's a silly trick, but it really helps to minimize cleanup. Plus, it's really satisfying to see all that dust on the post-it. I still ended up with some fraying around the edges of the hole, but it was still perfect to let the wire through. Again, I can't say enough how much I love these wire clips that come with these lights. With all the wires neatly secured, they blend in nicely with the bookcase and they're hardly noticeable. And I set up the wires so that they could run under the desk all the way to the power strip. So everything is neat and tidy in one location and I can easily control the lights when I'm sitting at my desk. Adding the under cabinet lights to the bookcases is a small detail, but it does go a long way to making this tiny office a bit more luxurious and also a very cozy space to work late into the evening editing videos. I hope you really enjoyed seeing the different ways that I used under cabinet lights in my home. And I would love to know which of these projects is your favorite, so let me know in the comments below. And if you're thinking of doing one of these projects in your home, I highly recommend the Parmida lights. With a five-year warranty, you know that they're built to last, and as you saw, they're also really easy to install. Now, if you're looking for more design inspiration from me, I have now started doing free live webinars. All you have to do to register is to go to engineeryourspace.com slash webinars and you'll see when my next one is so you can sign up. Hopefully I'll see you at the next one. And if you're looking to find out what I'm up to day to day, the best place for that is on Instagram. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.